one of the Alakahoyuk bronze standards from a pre-Hittite tomb dating to the 3rd millennium BCE, from the Museum of Anatolian Civilizations, anchor a giant ceremonial dirk of the Plokreskan Amersians type, Plokreskan. France, 1500-1300 BCE The Bronze Age is a historic period, approximately 3300 BCE to 1200 BCE, that was characterized by the use of bronze, in some areas proto-writing, and other early features of urban civilization. The Bronze Age is the second principal period of the three-age stone bronze-iron system, as proposed in modern times by Christian Jurgensen Thompson, for classifying and studying ancient societies and history. An ancient civilization is deemed to be part of the Bronze Age because it either produced bronze by smelting its own copper and alloying it with tin, arsenic, or other metals, or traded other items for bronze from production areas elsewhere. Bronze was harder and more durable than other metals available at the time, allowing Bronze Age civilizations to gain a technological advantage. While terrestrial iron is naturally abundant, its high melting point of 1538 degrees Celsius placed it out of reach of common use until the end of the 2nd millennium BCE. Tin's low melting point of 231.9 degrees Celsius and copper's relatively moderate melting point of 1085 degrees Celsius placed them within the capabilities of the Neolithic pottery kilns, which date back to 6000 BC and were able to produce temperatures greater than 900 degrees Celsius. Copper slash tin ores are rare, since there were no tin bronzes in Western Asia before trading in bronze began in the 3rd millennium BCE. Worldwide, the Bronze Age generally followed the Neolithic period, with the Chalcolithic serving as a transition. Bronze Age cultures differed in their development of the first writing. According to archaeological evidence, cultures in Mesopotamia and Egypt developed the earliest practical writing systems. Diffusion of metallurgy in Europe and Asia Minor, the darkest areas are the oldest. The overall period is characterized by the widespread use of bronze, though the place and time of the introduction and development of bronze technology were not universally synchronous. Human-made tin bronze technology requires set production techniques. Tin must be mined and smelted separately, then added to hot copper to make bronze alloy. The Bronze Age was a time of extensive use of metals and of developing trade networks. A 2013 report suggests that the earliest tin alloy bronze dates to the mid-5th millennium BCE in a Vinca culture site in Plotnik, although this culture is not conventionally considered part of the Bronze Age. The dating of the foil has been disputed. Western Asia and the Near East were the first regions to enter the Bronze Age, which began with the rise of the Mesopotamian civilization of Sumer in the mid-4th millennium BCE. Cultures In the ancient Near East practiced intensive year-round agriculture, developed writing systems, invented the potter's wheel, created centralized governments, written law codes, city-states and nation-states and empires, embarked on advanced architectural projects, introduced social stratification, economic and civil administration, slavery, and practiced organized warfare, medicine and religion. Societies in the region laid the foundations for astronomy, mathematics and astrology. Anatolia Bronze Hittite Tablet from Sorum Bogoskoy dating from 1235 BCE, Museum of Anatolian Civilizations, Ankara the Hittite Empire was established in Hattusa in northern Anatolia from the 18th century BCE. In the 14th century BCE the Hittite Kingdom was at its height, encompassing central Anatolia, southwestern Syria as far as Uguri, and upper Mesopotamia. After 1180 BCE, amid general turmoil in the Levant conjectured to have been associated with the sudden arrival of the Sea Peoples, the kingdom disintegrated into several independent Neo-Hittite city-states, some of which survived until as late as the 8th century BCE. Ertzawa in western Anatolia during the second half of the second millennium BCE likely extended along southern Anatolia in a belt that reaches from near the Turkish Lakes region to the Aegean coast. Ertzawa was the western neighbor, sometimes a rival and sometimes a vassal, of the Middle and New Hittite kingdoms. The Aswa League was a confederation of states in western Anatolia that was defeated by the Hittites under an earlier Tutalia I, around 1400 BCE. Ertzawa has been associated with the much more obscure Aswa generally located to its north. It probably bordered it, and may even be an alternative term for it. Egypt Early Bronze Dynasty's Bronze Mirror with a female human figure at the base, 18th Dynasty of Egypt's Sphinx Lion of Thutmose 3 1479-1425 BCE in Ancient Egypt, the Bronze Age begins in the Proto-Dynastic Period, c. 3150 BCE. 
the archaic early Bronze Age of Egypt, known as the early dynastic period of Egypt, immediately follows the unification of Lower and Upper Egypt, c. 3100 BCE. It is generally taken to include the first and second dynasties, lasting from the proto-dynastic period of Egypt until about 2686 BCE, or the beginning of the Old Kingdom. With the first dynasty, the capital moved from Abydus to Memphis with a unified Egypt ruled by an Egyptian god-king. Abydus remained the major holy land in the south. The hallmarks of ancient Egyptian civilization, such as art, architecture and many aspects of religion, took shape during the early dynastic period. Memphis in the early Bronze Age was the largest city of the time. The Old Kingdom of the Regional Bronze Age is the name given to the period in the 3rd millennium BCE when Egypt attained its first continuous peak of civilization and complexity and achievement, the first of three kingdom periods, which marked the high points of civilization in the Lower Nile Valley. The first intermediate period of Egypt, often described as a dark period in ancient Egyptian history, spanned about 100 years after the end of the Old Kingdom from about 2181 to 2055 BCE. Very little monumental evidence survives from this period. Especially from the early part of it. The first intermediate period was a dynamic time when the rule of Egypt was roughly divided between two competing for power bases, Heracleopolis in Lower Egypt and Thebes in Upper Egypt. These two kingdoms would eventually come into conflict, with the Theban kings conquering the north, resulting in the reunification of Egypt under a single ruler during the second part of the 11th dynasty. Nubia The Bronze Age in Nubia started as early as 2300 BCE. Copper smelting was introduced by Egyptians to the Nubian city of Meroe, in modern-day Sudan, around 2600 BCE. A furnace for bronze casting has been found in Kerma that is dated to 2300 to 1900 BCE. Middle Bronze Dynasties The Middle Kingdom of Egypt lasted from 2055 to 1650 BCE. During this period, the Osiris funerary cult rose to dominate Egyptian popular religion. The period comprises two phases, the 11th dynasty, which ruled from Thebes and the 12th and 13th dynasty centered on El Lisht. The unified kingdom was previously considered to comprise the 11th and 12th dynasties, but historians now at least partially consider the 13th dynasty to belong to the Middle Kingdom. During the Second Intermediate Period, ancient Egypt fell into disarray for a second time, between the end of the Middle Kingdom and the start of the New Kingdom. It is best known for the Hyksos, whose reign comprised the 15th and 16th dynasties. The Hyksos first appeared in Egypt during the 11th dynasty, began their climb to power in the 13th dynasty, and emerged from the Second Intermediate Period in control of Avaris and the Delta. By the 15th dynasty, they ruled Lower Egypt, and they were expelled at the end of the 17th dynasty. Late Bronze Dynasties The New Kingdom of Egypt, also referred to as the Egyptian Empire, lasted from the 16th to the 11th century BCE. The New Kingdom followed the Second Intermediate Period and was succeeded by the Third Intermediate Period. It was Egypt's most prosperous time and marked the peak of Egypt's power. The later New Kingdom, I. E. The 19th and 20th dynasties, is also known as the Ramesside period, after the 11 pharaohs that took the name of Ramses. Iranian Plateau Late 3rd Millennium BCE Silver Cup from Marbdasht, Fars, with linear Elamite inscription. Elam was a pre-Iranian ancient civilization located to the east of Mesopotamia. In the Old Elamite period, Elam consisted of kingdoms on the Iranian Plateau, centered in Anshan, and from the mid-2nd millennium BCE, it was centered in Susa in the Khuzestan lowlands. Its culture played a crucial role in the Gushan Empire and especially during the Iranian Achaemenid dynasty that succeeded it. The Oxus civilization was a Bronze Age Central Asian culture dated to c. 2300-1700 BCE and centered on the upper Amu Darya. In the early Bronze Age, the culture of the Kopet Dagoases and al Tindip developed a proto-urban society. This corresponds to level 4 at Namazgatepi. Al Tindip was a major center even then. Pottery was well turned. Grapes were grown. The height of this urban development was reached in the Middle Bronze Age c. 2300 BCE, corresponding to level V at Namazgadeep. This Bronze Age culture is called the Bactria Margiana Archaeological Complex. The Kuli culture, similar to those of the Indus Valley civilization, was located in southern Balochistan c. 2500 to 2000 BCE. Agriculture was the economic base of these people. At several places, dams were found, 
providing evidence for a highly developed water management system. Master of Animals in Chlorite, Giroff Culture, c. 2500 BCE, Bronze Age I, National Museum of Iran Konar Sandal is associated with the hypothesized Giroff culture, a 3rd millennium BC culture postulated based on a collection of artifacts confiscated in 2001. Levant Chalcolithic Copper Mine in Timna Valley, Negev Desert, Israel in modern scholarship, the chronology of the Bronze Age Levant is divided into early-slash-proto-Syrian, corresponding to the early Bronze. Old Syrian, corresponding to the Middle Bronze. Middle Syrian, corresponding to the Late Bronze. The term Neo-Syria is used to designate the early Iron Age. The Old Syrian period was dominated by the Eblate First Kingdom, Nagar and the Mariot Second Kingdom. The Akkadians conquered large areas of the Levant and were followed by the Amorite kingdoms, c. 2000-1600 BCE, which arose in Mari, Yamhad, Khatna, Assyria. From the 15th century BCE onward, the term Amuru is usually applied to the region extending north of Canaan as far as Kadesh on the Orontes River. The earliest known Ugaritic contact with Egypt comes from a Carnelian bead identified with the Middle Kingdom Pharaoh Sinus Red Eye. 1971-1926 BCE. A stella and a statuette from the Egyptian pharaoh Sinusret III and Minivit III have also been found. However, it is unclear at what time these monuments got to Ugarit. In the Amarna letters, messages from Ugarit c. 1350 BCE written by Amit Ruai, Nikmadu II, and his queen were discovered. From the 16th to the 13th century BCE, Ugarit remained in constant touch with Egypt and Cyprus. The Mitanni was a loosely organized state in northern Syria, and southeast Anatolia from c. 1500-1300 BCE. Founded by an Indo-Aryan ruling class that governed a predominantly Hurrian population, Mitanni came to be a regional power after the Hittite destruction of Kassit Babylon created a power vacuum in Mesopotamia. At its beginning, Mitanni's major rival was Egypt under the Thutmosids. However, with the ascent of the Hittite Empire, Mitanni and Egypt allied to protect their mutual interests from the threat of Hittite domination. At the height of its power, during the 14th century BCE, it had outposts centered on its capital, Washakani, which archaeologists have located on the headwaters of the Kabur River. Eventually, Mitanni succumbed to Hittite, and later Assyrian attacks, and was reduced to a province of the Middle Assyrian Empire. The Israelites were an ancient Semitic-speaking people of the ancient Near East who inhabited part of Canaan during the tribal and monarchic periods, and lived in the region in smaller numbers after the fall of the monarchy. The name Israel first appears c. 1209 BCE, at the end of the Late Bronze Age and the very beginning of the Iron Age, on the Merneptah stele raised by the Egyptian pharaoh Merneptah. The Arameans were a northwest Semitic semi-nomadic and pastoralist people who originated in what is now modern Syria during the Late Bronze Age and the Early Iron Age. Large groups migrated to Mesopotamia, where they intermingled with the native Akkadian population. The Arameans never had a unified empire, they were divided into independent kingdoms all across the Near East. After the Bronze Age collapse, their political influence was confined to many Syro-Hittite states, which were entirely absorbed into the Neo-Assyrian Empire. By the 8th century BCE, Mesopotamia The Mesopotamian Bronze Age began about 3500 BCE and ended with the Kassid period. The usual tripartite division into an early, middle and late Bronze Age is not used. Instead, a division primarily based on art historical and historical characteristics is more common. The cities of the ancient Near East housed several tens of thousands of people. Yor, Kish, Ishim, Larsa and Nippur in the Middle Bronze Age and Babylon, Kala and Asur in the Late Bronze Age similarly had large populations. The Akkadian Empire became the dominant power in the region, and after its fall the Sumerians enjoyed a renaissance with the Neo-Sumerian Empire. Assyria was extant from as early as the 25th century BCE, and became a regional power with the old Assyrian Empire. The earliest mention of Babylon appears on a tablet from the reign of Sargon of Akkad in the 23rd century BCE. The Amorite dynasty established the city-state of Babylon in the 19th century BCE. Over 100 years later, it briefly took over the other city-states and formed the short-lived First Babylonian Empire during what is also called the Old Babylonian Period. Akkad, Assyria, and Babylonia all use the written East Semitic Akkadian language for official use and as a spoken language. By that time, the Sumerian language was no longer spoken, 
but was still in religious use in Assyria and Babylonia, and would remain. So until the 1st century CE. The Akkadian and Sumerian traditions played a major role in later Assyrian and Babylonian culture. Even though Babylonia itself was founded by non-native Amorites, and often ruled by other non-indigenous peoples, such as Kassites, Arameans, and Chaldeans, as well as its Assyrian neighbors. Central Asia Bactria Margiana Archaeological Complex The Bactria Margiana Archaeological Complex, also known as the Oxus Civilization, was a Bronze Age civilization in Central Asia, dated to c. 2400-1600 BCE, located in present-day northern Afghanistan, eastern Turkmenistan, southern Uzbekistan and western Tajikistan, centered on the upper Amu Darya. Its sites were discovered and named by the Soviet archaeologist Viktor Saryaniti. Bactria was the Greek name for the area of Bactra, in what is now northern Afghanistan, and Margiana was the Greek name for the Persian satrapy of Margus, the capital of which was Merv, in modern-day southeastern Turkmenistan. According to recent studies the Bak was not a primary contributor to later South Asian genetics. Sima Turbino phenomenon The Altai Mountains in what is now southern Russia and central Mongolia have been identified as the point of origin of a cultural enigma term the Sima Turbino phenomenon. It is conjectured that changes in climate in this region around 2000 BCE and the ensuing ecological, economic and political changes triggered a rapid and massive migration westward into northeast Europe. Eastward into China and southward into Vietnam and Thailand across a frontier of some 4,000 miles. This migration took place in just five to six generations and led to peoples from Finland in the west to Thailand in the east employing the same metal working technology and, in some areas, horse breeding and riding. It is further conjectured that the same migration spread the Uralic group of languages across Europe and Asia. Some 39 languages of this group are still extant, including Hungarian, Finnish, and Estonian. However, recent genetic testings of sites in South Siberia and Kazakhstan would rather support a spreading of the bronze technology via Indo-European migrations eastwards. As this technology was well known for quite a while in western regions. East Asia China A Shang Dynasty II handled bronze gefuting Gui Spring and Autumn Period Pu bronze vessel with interlaced dragon design in China. The earliest fragments of what may have been bronze artifacts have been found in the Majiao culture site. The term Bronze Age has been transferred to the archaeology of China from that of Western Eurasia, and there is no consensus or universally used convention delimiting the Bronze Age in the context of Chinese prehistory. By convention, the early Bronze Age in China is sometimes taken as equivalent to the Shang Dynasty period of Chinese prehistory, 16th to 11th centuries BCE, and the later Bronze Age is equivalent to the Zhou Dynasty period. Although there is an argument to be made that the Bronze Age proper never ended in China, as there is no recognizable transition to an Iron Age. Significantly, together with the jade art that precedes it, bronze was seen as a fine material for ritual art when compared with iron or stone. Stone artifacts only becoming popular for tombs during the Han on probable Indian influence. Bronze metallurgy in China originated in what is referred to as the Erlitao period which some historians argue places it within the range of dates controlled by the Shang dynasty. Others believe the Erlitao sites belong to the preceding Xia dynasty. The U.S. National Gallery of Art defines the Chinese Bronze Age as the period between about 2000 BCE and 771 BCE, a period that begins with the Erlitao culture and ends abruptly with the disintegration of Western Zhou rule. While it is by far more likely that bronze work developed inside China separately from outside influence, the discovery of Europoid. Mummies in Xinjiang suggests a possible route of transmission from the West beginning in the early 2nd millennium BCE. This is, however, still just speculation since there is a lack of direct evidence. A few human mummies alone cannot provide sufficient explanation of metallurgy transmission. Furthermore, the oldest bronze objects found in China so far were discovered at the Maj Ao site in Gansu rather than at Xinjiang the Shang dynasty of the Yellow River Valley rose to power after the Xia Dynasty around 1600 BCE. While some direct information about the Shang Dynasty comes from Shang era inscriptions on bronze artifacts. Most comes from oracle bones, turtle shells, cattle scapulae, or other bones, which bear glyphs that form the first significant corpus of recorded Chinese characters. Iron has been found from the Zhou Dynasty, but its use was minimal. Chinese literature dating to the 6th century BCE attests knowledge of iron smelting, Yet bronze continues to occupy the seat of significance in the archaeological and historical record for some time after this. 
Historian W.C. White argues that iron did not supplant bronze at any period before the end of the Zhou dynasty and that bronze vessels make up the majority of metal vessels through the later Han period, or to 221 BC, sic. The Chinese bronze artifacts generally are either utilitarian, like spear points or adze heads, or ritual bronzes, which are more elaborate versions in precious materials of everyday vessels, as well as tools and weapons. Examples are the numerous large sacrificial tripods known as dings in Chinese, there are many other distinct shapes. Surviving identified Chinese ritual bronzes tend to be highly decorated, often with the toti motif, which involves highly stylized animal faces. These appear in three main motif types, those of demons, of symbolic animals, and abstract symbols. Many large bronzes also bear cast inscriptions that are the great bulk of the surviving body of early Chinese writing and have helped historians and archaeologists piece together the history of China, especially during the Zhou dynasty. The bronzes of the Western Zhou dynasty document large portions of history not found in the extant texts that were often composed by persons of varying rank and possibly even social class. Further, the medium of cast bronze lends the record they preserve a permanence not enjoyed by manuscripts. These inscriptions can commonly be subdivided into four parts, a reference to the date and place, the naming of the event commemorated, the list of gifts given to the artisan in exchange for the bronze, and a dedication. The relative points of reference these vessels provide have enabled historians to place most of the vessels within a certain time frame of the Western Zhou period, allowing them to trace the evolution of the vessels and the events they record. Korea The beginning of the Bronze Age on the peninsula is around 1000-800 BCE. Although the Korean Bronze Age culture derives from the Liaoning and Manchuria, it exhibits unique typology and styles, especially in ritual objects. The Mumun pottery period is named after the Korean name for undecorated or plain cooking and storage vessels that form a large part of the pottery assemblage over the entire length of the period. But especially 850-550 BCE. The Mumun period is known for the origins of intensive agriculture and complex societies in both the Korean peninsula and the Japanese archipelago. The Middle Mumun pottery period culture of the southern Korean peninsula gradually adopted bronze production after a period when Liaoning-style bronze daggers and other bronze artifacts were exchanged as far as the interior part of the southern peninsula. The bronze daggers lent prestige and authority to the personages who wielded and were buried with them in high-status megalithic burials at south coastal centers such as the Ijeom Dong site. Bronze was an important element in ceremonies and as for mortuary offerings until 100. Japan The Japanese archipelago saw the introduction of bronze during the beginning of the early Yai period, which saw the introduction of metalworking and agricultural practices brought in by settlers arriving from the continent. Bronze and iron smelting techniques spread to the Japanese archipelago through contact with other ancient East Asian civilizations, particularly immigration and trade from the Korean peninsula and ancient mainland China. Iron was mainly used for agricultural and other tools, whereas ritual and ceremonial artifacts were mainly made of bronze. South Asia Indus Valley Dancing Girl of Mahenjo Daro, c. 2500 BCE the Bronze Age on the Indian subcontinent began around 3300 BCE with the beginning of the Indus Valley civilization. Inhabitants of the Indus Valley, the Harappans, developed new techniques in metallurgy and produced copper, bronze, lead and tin. The late Harappan culture, which dates from 1900 to 1400 BCE, overlapped the transition from the Bronze Age to the Iron Age, thus it is difficult to date this transition accurately. It has been claimed that a 6,000-year-old copper amulet manufactured in Mergur in the shape of wool spoke is the earliest example of lost wax casting in the world. The civilization cities were noted for their urban planning, baked brick houses, elaborate drainage systems, water supply systems, clusters of large non-residential buildings, and new techniques in handicraft and metallurgy. The large cities of Mahenjo-Daro and Harappa very likely grew to contain between 30,000 and 60,000 individuals, and the civilization itself during its fluorescence may have contained between 1 and 5 million individuals. Southeast Asia Thailand in Banqiang, Thailand, bronze artifacts have been discovered dating to 2100 BC. However, according to the radiocarbon dating on the human and pig bones in Banqiang, some scholars propose that the initial bronze age in Banqiang was in late 2nd millennium. In Nyongdan, Burma, bronze tools have been excavated along with ceramics and stone artifacts. Dating is still currently broad. Ban Nan Wat, excavated by Charles Hyam, 
was a rich site with over 640 graves excavated that gleaned many complex bronze items that may have had social value connected to them. Van Xiang, however, is the most thoroughly documented site while having the clearest evidence of metallurgy when it comes to Southeast Asia. With a rough date range of late 3rd millennium BCE to the 1st millennium CE, this site alone has various artifacts such as burial pottery, fragments of bronze, copper base bangles, and much more. What's interesting about this site, however, is not just the old age of the artifacts but that this technology suggested on-site casting from the very beginning. The on-site casting supports the theory that bronze was first introduced in Southeast Asia as fully developed which therefore shows that bronze was innovated from a different country. Some scholars believe that the copper-based metallurgy was disseminated from northwest and central China via south and southwest areas such as Guangdong Province and Yunnan Province and finally into Southeast Asia around 1000 BCE. Archaeology also suggests that Bronze Age metallurgy may not have been as significant a catalyst in social stratification and warfare in Southeast Asia as in other regions. Social distribution shifting away from chiefdom states to a heterarchical network. Data analyses of sites such as Ban Lom Khao, Ban Na Di, Nan Nak The, Kok Pan Om Di, and Nong Nor have consistently led researchers to conclude that there was no entrenched hierarchy. Vietnam dating back to the Neolithic Age, the first bronze drum, called the Dong Sun Drum, were uncovered in and around the Red River Delta regions of northern Vietnam and southern China. These relate to the prehistoric Dong Sun culture of Vietnam. Archaeological research in northern Vietnam indicates an increase in rates of infectious disease following the advent of metallurgy, skeletal. Fragments in sites dating to the early and mid-Bronze Age evidence a greater proportion of lesions than in sites of earlier periods. There are a few possible implications of this. One is the increased contact with bacterial and or fungal pathogens due to increased population density and land clearing slash cultivation. The other one is decreased levels of immunocompetence in the metal age due to changes in the diet caused by agriculture. The last is that there may have been an emergence of infectious disease in the dead but the period that evolved into a more virulent form in the metal period. A few examples of named Bronze Age cultures in Europe in roughly relative order. Balkans A study in the journal Antiquity published in 2013 reported the discovery of a tin bronze foil from the Plochnik archaeological site securely dated to c. 4650 BCE as well as 14 other artifacts from Serbia and Bulgaria dated to before 4000 BCE has shown that early tin bronze was more common than previously thought. And developed independently in Europe 1500 years before the first tin bronze alloys in the Near East. The production of complex tin bronzes lasted for c. 500 years in the Balkans. The authors reported that evidence for the production of such complex bronzes disappears at the end of the 5th millennium coinciding with the collapse of large cultural complexes in northeastern Bulgaria and Thrace in the late 5th millennium BCE. Tin bronzes using cassiterite tin would be reintroduced to the area again some 1,500 years later. A Aegean gold mask of Agamemnon produced during the Mycenaean civilization, from Mycenae, Greece, 1550 BCE the Aegean Bronze Age began around 3200 BCE when civilizations first established a far-ranging trade network. This network imported tin and charcoal to Cyprus, where copper was mined and alloyed with the tin to produce bronze. Bronze objects were then exported far and wide in support of the trade. Isotopic analysis of tin in some Mediterranean bronze artifacts suggests that they may have originated from Great Britain. Knowledge of navigation was well developed at this time and reached a peak of skill not exceeded until 1730 when the invention of the chronometer enabled the precise determination of longitude. The Minoan civilization based in Knossos on the island of Crete appears to have coordinated and defended its Bronze Age trade. Ancient empires valued luxury goods in contrast to staple foods, leading to famine. Aegean collapse invasions, destruction and possible population movements during the collapse of the Bronze Age, c. 1200 BCE Bronze Age collapse theories have described aspects of the end of the Bronze Age in this region. At the end of the Bronze Age in the Aegean region, the Mycenaean administration of the regional trade empire followed the decline of Minoan primacy. Several Minoan client states lost much of their population to famine or pestilence. This would indicate that the trade network may have failed, preventing the trade that would previously have relieved such famines and prevented illness caused by malnutrition. It is also known that in this era the breadbasket of the Minoan Empire, 
the area north of the Black Sea also suddenly lost much of its population, and thus probably some capacity to cultivate crops. Drought and famine in Anatolia may have also led to the Aegean collapse by disrupting trade networks, and therefore preventing the Aegean from accessing bronze and luxury goods. The Aegean collapse has been attributed to the exhaustion of the Cypriot forests causing the end of the bronze trade. These forests are known to have existed into later times, and experiments have shown that charcoal production on the scale necessary for the bronze production of the late Bronze Age would have exhausted them in less than 50 years. The Aegean collapse has also been attributed to the fact that as iron tools became more common, the main justification for the tin trade ended, and that trade network ceased to function as it did formerly. The colonies of the Minoan Empire then suffered drought, famine, war or some combination of those three, and had no access to the distant resources of an empire by which they could easily recover. The Thera eruption occurred c. 1600 BCE, 110 km north of Crete. Speculation includes that a tsunami from Thera destroyed Cretan cities. A tsunami may have destroyed the Cretan navy in its home harbor, which then lost crucial naval battles, so that in the Elamib slash Elamb event the cities of Crete burned and the Mycenaean civilization took over Knossos. If the eruption occurred in the late 17th century BCE then its immediate effects belong to the Middle to Late Bronze Age transition, and not to the end of the Late Bronze Age. But it could have triggered the instability that led to the collapse first of Knossos and then of Bronze Age society overall. One such theory highlights the role of Cretan expertise in administering the empire, post, Thera. If this expertise was concentrated in Crete, then the Mycenaeans may have made political and commercial mistakes in administering the Cretan Empire. Archaeological findings, including some on the island of Thera, suggest that the center of the Minoan civilization at the time of the eruption was actually on Thera rather than on Crete. According to this theory, the catastrophic loss of the political, administrative and economic center due to the eruption, as well as the damage wrought by the tsunami to the coastal towns and villages of Crete precipitated the decline of the Minoans. A weakened political entity with a reduced economic and military capability and fabled riches would have then been more vulnerable to conquest. Indeed, the Santorini eruption is usually dated to c. 1630 BCE, while the Mycenaean Greeks first enter the historical record a few decades later, c. 1600 BCE. The later Mycenaean assaults on Crete and Troy would have been a continuation of the steady encroachment of the Greeks upon the weakened Minoan world. Central Europe Nebra Sky Disc, Germany Cuirasses from Marmes, France Bronze Nergic Figurine, Sardinia Bronze Age Sword, Central Europe in Central Europe. The early Bronze Age Unetis culture includes numerous smaller groups like the Straubing, Adlerberg and Hopfen cultures. Some very rich burials, such as the one located at Lubingen with grave gifts crafted from gold point to an increase of social stratification already present in the Unetis culture. All in all, cemeteries of this period are rare and of small size. The Unetis culture is followed by the Middle Bronze Age tumulus culture, which is characterized by inhumation burials in tumuli. In the Eastern Hungarian Chorus tributaries, the Early Bronze Age first saw the introduction of the Mako culture, followed by the Otomani and Gulavarsan cultures. The Late Bronze Age Urnfield culture is characterized by cremation burials. It includes the Lusatian culture in eastern Germany and Poland that continues into the Iron Age. The Central European Bronze Age is followed by the Iron Age Hallstatt culture. Important sites include, the Bronze Age in Central Europe has been described in the chronological schema of German prehistorian Paul Reinecke. He described Bronze A1 period and Bronze A2 period, 1950-1700 BCE, daggers with metal hilt. Flanged axes, halberds, Pins with perforated spherical heads, solid bracelets, and phases Hallstatt A and B. South Europe The Apennine culture is a technology complex of central and southern Italy spanning the Chalcolithic and Bronze Age proper. The Comuni were an ancient people of uncertain origin who lived in Val Camonica, in what is now northern Lombardy, during the Iron Age. Although human groups of hunters, shepherds and farmers are known to have lived in the area since the Neolithic. Located in Sardinia and Corsica, the Nergic civilization lasted from the early Bronze Age to the 2nd century CE, when the islands were already Romanized. They take their name from the characteristic Nergic towers, which evolved from the pre-existing megalithic culture, which built dolmens and menhirs. The Nurig towers are unanimously considered the best preserved and largest megalithic remains in Europe. Their effective use is still debated, some scholars consider them as monumental tombs, others as houses of the giants, 
other as fortresses, ovens for metal fusion prisons or, finally, temples for a solar cult. Around the end of the 3rd millennium BCE, Sardinia exported towards Sicily a culture that built small dolmens, trilithic or polygonal shaped, that served as tombs as it has been ascertained in the Sicilian dolmen of Cava de Servi. From this region, they reached Malta Island and other countries of Mediterranean basin. The Terramare was an early Indo-European civilization in the area of what is now Pianura Padana before the arrival of the Celts and in other parts of Europe. They lived in square villages of wooden stilt houses. These villages were built on land, but generally near a stream, with roads that crossed each other at right angles. The whole complex denoted the nature of a fortified settlement. Terramare was widespread in the Pianura Padana and in the rest of Europe. The civilization developed in the Middle and Late Bronze Age, between the 17th and the 13th centuries BCE. The Castellieri culture developed in Istria during the Middle Bronze Age. It lasted for more than a millennium, from the 15th century BCE until the Roman conquest in the 3rd century BCE. It takes its name from the fortified boroughs that characterize the culture. The Canigrate culture developed from the Mid-Bronze Age until the Iron Age in the Pianura Padana, in what are now Western Lombardy, Eastern Piedmont and Ticino. It takes its name from the township of Canigrate where, in the 20th century, some 50 tombs with ceramics and metal objects were found. The Canigrate culture migrated from the northwest part of the Alps and descended to Pianura Padana from the Swiss Alps passes and the Ticino. The Goloseca culture developed starting from the Late Bronze Age in the Po Plain. It takes its name from Goloseca, a locality next to the Ticino where, in the early 19th century, Abbot Giovanni Battista Gianni excavated its first findings. Remains of the Goloseca culture span an area of c. 20,000 square kilometers south of the Alps, between the Po, Sija and Serio rivers, dating from the 9th to the 4th century BCE. West Europe Atlantic Bronze Age Gold Lunula, Ireland's Ceremonial Giant. Dirk, Netherlands Golden Helm at the Atlantic Bronze Age is a cultural complex of the period of approximately 1300 to 700 BCE that includes different cultures in Portugal, Andalusia, Galicia, and the British Isles. It is marked by economic and cultural exchange. Commercial contacts extend to Denmark and the Mediterranean. The Atlantic Bronze Age was defined by many distinct regional centers of metal production, unified by a regular maritime exchange of some of their products. Great Britain In Great Britain, the Bronze Age is considered to have been the period from around 2100 to 750 BCE. Migration brought new people to the islands from the continent. Recent tooth enamel isotope research on bodies found in early Bronze Age graves around Stonehenge indicates that at least some of the migrants came from the area of modern Switzerland. Another example site is Must Farm, near Whittlesea, which has recently been host to the most complete Bronze Age will ever to be found. The beaker culture displayed different behaviors from the earlier Neolithic people, and cultural change was significant. Integration is thought to have been peaceful, as many of the early Henge sites were seemingly adopted by the newcomers. The rich Wessex culture developed in southern Britain at this time. Additionally, the climate was deteriorating, where once the weather was warm and dry it became much wetter as the Bronze Age continued, forcing the population away from easily defended sites in the hills and into the fertile valleys. Large livestock farms developed in the lowlands and appear to have contributed to economic growth and inspired increasing forest clearances. The Deverell Rimberry culture began to emerge in the second half of the Middle Bronze Age to exploit these conditions. Devon and Cornwall were major sources of tin for much of Western Europe and copper was extracted from sites such as the Great Orme Mine in Northern Wales. Social groups appear to have been tribal but with growing complexity and hierarchies becoming apparent the burial of the dead became more individual. For example, whereas in the Neolithic a large chambered cairn or long barrow housed the dead, early Bronze Age people buried their dead in individual barrows. Or sometimes in cysts covered with cairns. The greatest quantities of bronze objects in England were discovered in East Cambridgeshire, where the most important finds were recovered in Eilham. Alloying of copper with zinc or tin to make brass or bronze was practiced soon after the discovery of copper itself. One copper mine at Great Orme in North Wales, extended to a depth of 70 metres. At Alderley Edge in Cheshire, carbon dates have established mining at around 2280-1890 BCE. The earliest identified metalworking site is much later, dated by globular urn-style pottery to approximately the 12th century BCE. The 
Identifiable sherds from over 500 mold fragments included a perfect fit of the hilt of a sword in the Wilburton style held in Somerset County Museum. Ireland The Bronze Age in Ireland commenced around 2000 BCE when copper was alloyed with tin and used to manufacture ballybeg type flat axes and associated metalwork. The preceding period is known as the Copper Age and is characterized by the production of flat axes, daggers, halberds and alls in copper. The period is divided into three phases, Early Bronze Age, Middle Bronze Age, and Late Bronze Age. Ireland is also known for a relatively large number of Early Bronze Age burials. One of the characteristic types of artifact of the Early Bronze Age in Ireland is the flat axe. There are five main types of flat axes, Loch Revel, Valley Beg, Killa, Valley Valley, Derenigan, and a number of metal ingots in the shape of axes. North Europe Trundumsund Chariot, Denmark, c. 1400 BCE The Bronze Age in Northern Europe spans the entire 2nd millennium BCE lasting until c. 600 BCE. The Northern Bronze Age was both a period and a Bronze Age culture in Scandinavian prehistory, c. 1700-500 BCE, with sites that reached as far east as Estonia. Succeeding the late Neolithic culture, its ethnic and linguistic affinities are unknown in the absence of written sources. It is followed by the pre-Roman Iron Age. Even though Northern European Bronze Age cultures were relatively late, and came into existence via trade, sites present rich and well-preserved objects made of wool, wood and imported Central European bronze and gold. Many rock carvings depict ships, and the large stone burial monuments known as stone ships suggest that shipping played an important role. Thousands of rock carvings depict ships, most probably representing sewn plank built canoes for warfare, fishing, and trade. These may have a history as far back as the Neolithic period and continue into the pre Roman Iron Age, as shown by the Hewart Spring boat. There are many mounds and rock carving sites from the period. Numerous artifacts of bronze and gold are found. No written language existed in the Nordic countries during the Bronze Age. The rock carvings have been dated through comparison with depicted artifacts. Caucasus arsenical bronze artifacts of the Mykop culture in the North Caucasus have been dated around the 4th millennium BCE. This innovation resulted in the circulation of arsenical bronze technology over southern and eastern Europe. Pontic Caspian steppe The Yamnaya culture is a late Copper Age slash early Bronze Age culture of the southern Bug slash Dniester slash Ural region. Dating to the 36th 23rd centuries BCE. The name also appears in English as Pit Grave Culture or Ochre Grave Culture. The Catacomb Culture, c. 2800-2200 BCE, comprises several related early Bronze Age cultures occupying what is presently Russia and Ukraine. The Srubnaya culture was a late Bronze Age culture. It is a successor to the Yamnaya and the Poltivka culture. Sub-Saharan Africa iron and copper smelting appeared around the same time in most parts of Africa. As such, most African civilizations outside of Egypt did not experience a distinct Bronze Age. Evidence for iron smelting appears earlier or at the same time as copper smelting in Nigeria c. 900-800 BCE, Rwanda and Burundi c. 700-500 BCE and Tanzania c. 300 BCE. There is a long-standing debate about whether the development of both copper and iron metallurgy were independently developed in sub-Saharan Africa or were introduced from the outside across the Sahara Desert from North Africa or the Indian Ocean. Evidence for theories of independent development and outside introduction are scarce and subject to active scholarly debate. Scholars have suggested that both the relative dearth of archaeological research in sub-Saharan Africa as well as long-standing prejudices have limited or biased our understanding of prehistoric metallurgy on the continent. One scholar characterized the state of historical knowledge as such, to say that the history of metallurgy in sub-Saharan Africa is complicated. Is perhaps an understatement. West Africa copper smelting took place in West Africa prior to the appearance of iron smelting in the region. Evidence for copper smelting furnaces was found near Agadez, Niger that has been dated as early as 2200 BCE. However, evidence for copper production in this region before 1000 BCE is debated. Evidence of copper mining and smelting has been found at Akjuj, Mauritania that suggests small-scale production c. 800-400 BCE. The Moche civilization of South America independently discovered and developed bronze smelting. Bronze technology was developed further by the Incas and used widely both for utilitarian objects and sculpture. 
A later appearance of limited bronze smelting in West Mexico suggests either contact of that region with Andean cultures or separate discovery of the technology. The Calcaqui people of northwest Argentina had bronze technology. Trade and industry played a major role in the development of the ancient Bronze Age civilizations. With artifacts of the Indus Valley civilization being found in ancient Mesopotamia and Egypt, it is clear that these civilizations were not only in touch with each other but also trading with each other. Early long-distance trade was limited almost exclusively to luxury goods like spices, textiles and precious metals. Not only did this make cities with ample amounts of these products extremely rich but also led to an intermingling of cultures for the first time in history. Trade routes were not only over land but also over water. The first and most extensive trade routes were over rivers such as the Nile, the Tigris and the Euphrates which led to growth of cities on the banks of these rivers. The domestication of camels at a later time also helped encourage the use of trade routes over land, linking the Indus Valley with the Mediterranean. This further led to towns sprouting up in numbers anywhere and everywhere there was a pit stop or caravan to ship port. Thanks for watching.